Now we're going to take a look at what makes events independent from each other. Again, this isn't given in the formula booklet, but if the probability of A and B is the same as the probability of A times the probability of B, then the events are said to be independent of each other. So if we have a look at an example, the events A and B are independent, with A being a third and A and B being a sixth. This can help us to answer our part A of our question to find the probability of A. Because we know the probability of A and B is the probability of A times the probability of B, because it says that they are independent, that's how we know that this is true, that means that we have a sixth equals a third times something, and again, like we did with our addition rule, we can pop that into our graphical calculator, into the equation, solver, and we can type it in here. If you're wanting to, you could just rearrange it, but if you want to make sure that you're definitely getting it right, we can type it in here. So a sixth equals shift and then your decimal point for your equal sign, a third times, and we're gonna use this X V to T button to be our probability of B. Oops, sorry, I've put two X's in there. There we go. And that gives us a half. So the probability of B is a half. Next, we're trying to find the probability of not A and B. Now for these two questions here, for part B and part C, it's going to be easier for us to draw a Venn diagram first. So my Venn diagram, I know what my probability of A, oops, I need a bit of a bigger bit in the middle there. It's okay. My probability of A and B is a sixth. If this is my circle for A and this is my circle for B, I know that the entirety of my circle for A is gonna add up to a third. And if you're unsure of what that is, remember you can put it in your calculator and have a third minus a sixth, which hopefully gives us a sixth. Good. So we know that this probability here is a sixth. Then for the probability of B, we know that that's a half. We've already had a sixth go in the middle. So we've got a half minus a sixth and hopefully this leaves us with a third there we go a third and as we did before in the previous sections we know that these probabilities are going to add up to one so we have a sixth plus a sixth plus a third which should give us two thirds so that means that we know that we have one third left over in the section outside of the two circles, but still inside our rectangle. Now I need my highlighters. Not A is everything outside of the circle for A. So that's everywhere I've just highlighted in yellow. B is going to be inside the circle for B. And because for this first one, it's and, I won't wear it's blue and yellow. So I won't wear it's made this kind of greeny color, which is a third. So for B, the probability of not A and B is a third. For C, I want the probability of not A or B. So remember that's where it's yellow, or blue, or yellow and blue, which gives us a third, plus a third, plus a sixth, which should give us five sixths. So the not probability of not A or B gives us five sixths. I wanna pause, you should take the opportunity to pause the video now and try the now you try question. So here we've got the probability of J is 0.25, the probability of K is 0.6, and again, we are told that they are independent from each other. That means that we can find the probability of J and K by using the probability of J and K is the probability of J 
times the probability of k. Remember, this only works when it says that they are independent. Don't start doing this for all the questions, only when it says that they are independent. So the probability of j and k is going to be 0 0.25 times 0 0.6, so 0 0.25 times 0 0.6, and hopefully this gives us 0 0.15, yep, 0 0.15. And then we can draw ourselves a Venn diagram to help us find these three probabilities. So if that is my circle for J and this is my circle for K, I can now fill in the information that I know. So I know that J and K, so the overlap is 0 0.15. The probability of J is 0 0.25. So the entire circle for J is going to add up to 0 0.25. 0.15 is already gone in the middle, so we're going to have 0.1 left over in J. For probability of K, we know that's 0.6. 0.15 is already gone in the overlap, so that leaves us with 0.45 left over to go in that section of K. Again, everything inside the rectangle should add up to 1. We've already had 0.15, 0.45 and 0.1, which adds up to 0.7. So we're going to have 0.3 outside of our two circles. So for part A, where we're looking at the probability of J or K, remember that's inside either J or K or both, which gives us 0.7. For B, the probability of not J and not K. Remember, if you were to try and highlight it or colour it or shade it in, not J would be everything outside of the circle for J. Not K is going to be everything outside of the circle for K. And because this is and, I want where it's gone this greeny colour, which means that we're looking at outside of the two circles, which gives us 0.3. Then for part C, we're looking at J or not K. Because I've already coloured this diagram in, I'm just quickly going to do myself a fresh one so I can see what I'm colouring in. So J, K, not 0.1, not 0.15, not 0.45, not 0.3. Back to my highlighters. I want J, so the inside of J. And I'm also looking at the outside of K. So everything that's not inside the K circle. So I'm looking at, and because it's or, I'm looking at the yellow part, my 0 0.15, the blue part, which is my 0 0.3, and the green part, where they both are true, which is 0 0.1. Adding those three together gives us the probability of J or not K to be 0 0.1, 0 0.4, 0 0.55. Next, we're going to talk about mutually exclusive events. So mutually exclusive events is where probability of A and B happening is zero. So mutually exclusive events cannot happen at the same time. So here we're talking about independence, but I'm also going to add a little bit to the end of these questions asking if they are mutually exclusive or not. So here we've got the probability that Luke does his homework is 0 0.4. The probability that Bryn does his homework is 0 0.5. The probability that they both do their homework is 0 0.23. Are the events of Luke and Bryn doing their homework independent? So to test this, we're going to have a look at the probability of Bryn times the probability of Luke and seeing if that is the same as the probability of Bryn and Luke. So the probability of Bryn doing his homework is 0 0.5. The probability of Luke doing his homework is 0 0.2, which gives us 0 0.5 times 0 0.2, which gives us 0 0.1. 0 0.1 is not the same as the probability of B and Bryn and Luke because it's not equal to 0 0.23. Therefore, these events 
are not independent. If we were then asked about what this means in context, if events are not independent, then they are what we call dependent, which means Bryn completing his homework, depends on Luke completing his homework. Which means that if Bryn completes his homework, there's a higher chance that Luke also completes his homework and vice versa. If Bryn doesn't do his homework, Luke also isn't likely to have done his homework. Now to answer the question of if these two are mutually exclusive, they are not. So these events are not mutually exclusive. Because the probability of Bryn and Luke completing their homework is not equal to zero. I'm going to give you a second now to pause the video, try the, the now you try question on this right hand side and also give a think to whether you think that this is a mutually exclusive event. So hopefully now you've paused the video and you've given the now you try a go. So this time we've got the probability that Nayab is using her phone in class is not 0.8, the probability that Joe is using her phone in class is not 0.4, and the probability that they're both using their phone in class is not 0.32, and we're trying to decide if Nayab and Joe using their phone are independent. So this time we're looking at the probability of Nayab times the probability of Joe on her phone is the same as the probability of Nayab and Joe on her phone. The probability of Nayab being on a phone is not 0.8. The probability of Joe being on a phone is not 0.3, is not 0.4, sorry. So not 0.8 times not 0.4, and that does give us not 0.32. And not 0.32 is equal to the probability of Nayab and Joe being on their phone. Therefore, they are independent. Which means that Nayab being on her phone does not depend on Joe being on her phone. Which means that these two are not interacting with each other. Okay, so Naya being on a phone does not increase or decrease the likelihood that Joe is on her phone. In terms of thinking if these two, if these two events are mutually exclusive from each other. Again, our probability of Naib and Joe being on their phones is not zero, which means that they are not mutually exclusive. So these events are not mutually exclusive. Because the probability of Nayab and Joe being on their phones is not equal to zero. Now, if we were to have a look at a Venn diagram representation of what mutually exclusive looks like, we could have something along the lines of this, where we're going to have three circles, one representing A, one representing B, and one representing C, and if we then had to decide which of these events here are mutually exclusive, well, the circle for A and the circle for C do not overlap with each other, 
which means that there is no way that the event A and the event C can happen at the same time. So in this diagram here, A and C are mutually exclusive. Because they can't happen at the same time. That's the end of probability. Thank you very much for listening.